following was performed by everyday riders like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I was just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that thing. <laughs> The following was performed by everyday riders like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I All right, welcome to Box Elder High School tonight as we have round two of Box Elder versus Bonneville coming up here tonight. Uh, Johnny, thanks for being here and uh, thanks for all the watchers uh, from Bonneville as well. Uh, we got the looks of a good game again here tonight. It's a region five game and lo lots on the line here. There, There is lots on the line. Bonneville leads the region with a record of five and one. Box Elder's right behind him, along with Woods Cross sitting at four and two. If Box Elder wins this, they're tied for first and probably a three-way tie. I'm going to assume that Woods Cross beats Bountiful tonight. You would think that's how it plays out. So it would be a three-way tie if Box Elder can somehow pull this off. Everybody else in the region is pulling for Box Elder tonight, right? I'm sure they are. <laughs> You know, because, you know, you look at a three-way tie, if, if Box Elder wins, and I, I'm assuming you're correct that uh, Woods Cross will beat Bountiful tonight. But, uh, you know, Bountiful and, uh, or not Bountiful, but Bonneville and Woods Cross split. Box Elder, Woods Cross split. And, uh, or maybe Woods Cross hasn't played. Wo Woods Cross beat Bon Bonneville, but they haven't played a second they time yet. They haven't played a second so, time, so. Interesting to see how it's, that would play out. But that would be the way that Woods Cross would come in in first place. Because if they swept, yeah, Bountiful. yeah. Um, well, even if they, I guess in, in many ways, Woods Cross controls their own destiny, so to speak. Because if they were to go out and beat Woods Cross or Bonneville again, they, they'd have the tiebreaker, assuming they can go the rest of the way without losing. But anyway, lots on the line. You know, it, we, we've talked a lot before about RPI, and that's the seeding for how you play in the state tournament or who you play and where you're placed. But everybody still wants a region championship. Absolutely. You know that. And when it comes to region play, uh, you know, the games seem to get a little bit more intense, a little bit, uh, a little bit tighter. Well, they know each other. They play each other a couple times every year. Um, you know, it, it's unlike, say, even like a Bear River who we play, but we usually only play them once. Yeah. And so they know these teams a lot better than the teams in non-conference play, or non-region play, I should say. As far as common opponents, there's a ton of them. Um, but we'll focus just on the region play, because the rest of them were a month or so ago and beyond. So, you know, I think region play, we have enough now to kind of take a look at it and see what's going to happen. 
Bonneville beat Box Elder the first time. We'll get into that specific game, what happened, but they beat them by seven. So a, a reasonably close game. Seven points is not much. That's a couple of possessions in today's basketball. Box Elder beat Bountiful by seven. Bonneville beat Bountiful by four. Box Elder beat Northridge by seven. Bonneville has played Northridge twice, beat them twice, once by eight and once by ten. Box Elder beat Viewmont by a lot. That was the, the game that Box Elder put on a clinic. Yes, they did. It was the best game I've seen this team play in, in a few years, quite honestly. Yeah, and the good thing is it shows the potential the Box Elder has. It did. They beat them by 29 points, and it wasn't that close. Um, it could have been a lot more, but Bonneville beat Viewmont just by two points. And then we mentioned that Box Elder split with Woods Cross. Woods Cross beat Bonneville. So everything points to a pretty even game. As far as uh, how many points Box Elder scores, we'll, once again, we'll focus on region play. Box Elder scores 63. They're the leading score team scoring-wise in the region. Bonneville scores 57, but only gives up 53. Box Elder gives up 62. That's how Bonneville wins their games. Yeah. They play, you and I were talking a little bit off the air before we, you know, started this broadcast. Bonneville doesn't win or lose by a ton of points. Their, their largest margin is 10. is 10. And that was against Northridge, who's one of the lower um, teams in the region. The rest of them are all, you know, three points, seven points, eight points, five, whatever. I mean, so they don't, really have high scoring games with large margins. They're going to like a little bit slower game. They're not looking to push the ball up the court. Uh, I think you're going to see more of that coming from Box Elder than you will from, uh, from Bonneville tonight. Now they both shoot. They average six made threes per game, both teams. So that should be I think Box Elder would like to get more than six, but uh, you know we'll see how the game goes. If if they're on, if either team is on with the threes, that's a huge advantage. Bruce, last time they played Bonneville, and it kind of explains their season, I would think. I haven't seen their games, but very consistent. In the first game they played, in the, their, their quarter scoring went like this, 12, 12, 14, 17. Box Elder went 9, 18, 5, 16. Box Elder's all over the place. Yeah. Very streaky, and I would say that that's kind of the team that we've seen this year. Is there's games like that Viewmont game they put on a clinic. Yeah, absolutely. And there's other games they came out kind of flat. It, it doesn't appear that that Bonneville does that. They're just consistent, which is why their overall record is what it is, sitting at 14 and three. You know, they just they don't beat themselves, is what I'm thinking. The, the other thing uh, on that uh, Box Elder Bonneville game, you know, Box Elder was up at halftime going into that game. And, uh, you know, they, they lost it in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, I heard it, you know, talking with uh, Coach Bollinger that uh, he says in that game, Bonneville uh, had about 20 turnovers. I don't know if he was pulling that number out of the hat, if that was the exact number, but uh, needless to say, they had, had a large number of turnovers, and most of them were in the first half of the game. So he said the pressure that comes from Box Elder creates those turnovers, and, and that's one of the things he's worried about here tonight is Box Elder's pressure. Their defense has come out and has been very good lately. Yeah, it's also one of those games that size-wise, they match up very well. Both teams, uh, they're almost identical size-wise across the board. I think McKee might have an inch on their center. You'd like to see him go inside and take advantage of maybe some height, but he sure likes the outside game, too. Yes, he does. You know, talking to Coach McKee uh, beforehand, he mentioned that they want to try and get the ball inside here tonight. They, they want to get touches in the paint. So hopefully that uh, will... Well, good, that makes me feel smart because that's I've been asking for that all year. <laughs> Does that mean that's what you're going to get? <laughs> no, and, and, and you know, to some extent, you take what's given to you. And a lot of bigs don't like to come out to the three-point line and play defense. And so if McKee gets the ball at the top of the key, 
he's more than willing to take that shot if somebody's not going to come out and guard him. So, you know, it, a lot might have to do with what they, what kind of defense they play against him. We saw against Woods Cross last time, um, Woods Cross came out and played a 3-2 zone, and Box Elder didn't handle it well. It'll be interesting to see what defense Bonneville plays. If they're a primarily a man-to-man -man team, I don't see them just changing for this one game. Teams tend to want to do what they do. Uh, yeah, that's true. Let's take a look at the RPIs. <clears throat> I printed these out this afternoon, so I don't think they've changed. Bonneville is sitting at number four, and they lead the way for Region 5. Woods Cross is coming in at number seven, and then Box Elder at number 11. And then you got Northridge at 15, Viewmont 24, and Bountiful 25. So Box, Region 5 doesn't have anybody in the top, uh, uh, you know, two or three. It's really the top two separate themselves by a long ways if you look at the numbers with Olympus and Orem. And we saw Olympus, I believe it was the first game of the year. Yeah. And that was a good team. They, they were very good. So, anyway, Bonneville's coming in at number four. They've, they've proven themselves. They win games. Not always by a lot, but they win. You know, another thing that Coach Bollinger said, he says, uh, you know, because I was asking him what kind, what kind of game he was expecting to see, and, and uh, he says, frankly, he says, I think first team 45 is going to win. That was his number. And I, and I was going to mention, we hadn't gotten to it, but I, Box Elder wants to get to 60. So that tells you that he wants a, a slower paced game. Yep. Which, if Box Elder comes out and you have uh, Lowe hit a three and, and, you know, maybe Stevenson hit a three or McKee, that tends to make the other team want to play a little quicker. Yep. The, you know, Bonneville's not, not used to being down six, eight points. No, they're not. So it'll be interesting. State tournament's coming up in a couple of weeks. I haven't looked at the dates. Bruce, do you know them? Uh, playing games, uh, you know, that'll be played at the home sites are going to be the week of uh, uh, February 24th, somewhere in through there. Let me pull up my calendar. So, so a couple no, weeks February, out. February 22nd and 23rd will be the first games for the girls and the boys. And, and both both boys and girls ought to have a home game to start with, yes. at least one home game. Um, Most, depending on win-loss record of uh, the other team, it could go uh, to two games. But uh, if if everything goes according to seed, you got to be in the top. Eight. You got to be in the top eight. Correct. Which, if Box Elder could win out, they could probably sneak up into that top eight. All right. Well, we were are going to take a quick break. We're going to see some of our hear from some of our sponsors and we will be right back Kent's Market is your hometown grocery store meeting your everyday needs whether it's fresh produce quality meats or a made from scratch bakery their excellent customer service will meet your needs we've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years we do aftercare, and that's where Melanie Christie will go in and meet with the family after the services have been completed, and she'll help them with Social Security, help no them file for life insurance, help them with federal government employee work. We go through credit cards. We, we help the family with all that transition that's coming out. No matter what generation you're from, when you hear Hanson Motor Company, we hope you consider buying a car from us. I'm Matt Hanson. My grandpa KV started Hanson Motor Company with a customer first philosophy. I know that he'd be proud as we have hundreds of five star reviews as we continue to put our customers first. Earning Hanson Motors another dealer of the year award in customer satisfaction. Come in and experience the family difference at Hanson Motors. Kent's Market is your hometown grocery store meeting your everyday needs. Whether it's fresh produce, quality meats, or a made from scratch bakery. Their excellent customer service will meet your needs, even at their pharmacy. Kent's has stores located in Brigham City, Tremont, Roy, and Clearfield. Check us out on Facebook or on our website, www.kentsgrocery.com. Oh, and don't forget, every Friday, it's Fritter Friday. All fritters are two for one dollar. Kent's Market, mostly owned and oh, it's pretty expensive, and concurrent enrollment classes are like five bucks a credit. It's such a good deal. Financially, it's just, it makes sense. 
It motivates me a lot more to learn more in the class. It's been really cool to be able to not only learn new things, but also receive high school and college credit. It's not just another class that you take in high school. It's actually something that's going to help me in my future. I think that USU is really out to help students get where they want to be in life. That's what's important. The following was performed by everyday writers like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that thing. <laughs> We offer embroidery and screen printing to help you promote your business. We can also help you with your church or school groups, family reunions, or any other occasion that might require a t-shirt. So come in and see us at 47 South Main in Brigham City or 115 West Main in Tremont. All right, welcome back here. We're about three minutes away from tip-off. And uh, just so that everyone knows that we will be giving away our uh, uh, $1,000 scholarship to one of the Box Elder High School athletes here tonight uh, at halftime. So make sure you stay uh, tuned and uh, ready to see who wins. No, that, that's outstanding. Thank you to the sponsors for, you know, uh, giving us the money to be able to do that scholarship. $1,000, is a, it, that's a game changer for a lot of kids. It, it sure is. I, I wish I would have had something like that when I was going to school. Of course, <laughs> when I went to school, I remember back then it was the quarter system, but at University of Utah for 15 credits was $245. <laughs> so that, that would have paid for a couple of years tuition. <laughs> that uh, It doesn't go that far now, but still $1,000 is really significant. Bruce, let me go over some of the, the scoring um, averages for each team. For Bonneville, their leading scorer is Carson Jones, averaging uh, just under 15 points a game. Next, you got a couple of players. They're brothers, I presume. Bo Dixon and Coy cousins. Dixon. They're cousins, they are not cousins, brothers, huh? Yes. Bo Dixon and Coy Dixon coming in at, at 10 points a game. They also like to shoot the three. To give you an example, uh, Coy has made 39 three pointers on the year. To give you a comparison, Matthew Lowe has scored 35. So he shoots the three even more than Matt. And, uh, on one less game, he's got four more threes. Uh, but even Bo has made 25, and that's more than, say, uh, Cooper Stevenson or Jackson McKee. So we like to think as Box Elder as, as being pretty proficient from the three-point line, but so is Bonneville. Absolutely. Nick, after that, you've got two players, Joe Tesh and Jake Williams, that are coming in at uh, eight or nine points uh, per game. That's their core five. They're probably their six men would be... I don't know how to pronounce that. Did he Miwa, tell you? Miwa Brown. Miwa Brown. He only averages four points a game, but he does come off the bench. And then you mentioned that they have one other one. Nate Burdett. Nate Burdett comes off the bench, but he only scores one and a quarter points per game. So those two, they're primarily going to stay with their five starters. Box Elder's coming in with Jackson McKee averaging 16. Uh, Elijah Kersey at 12. Matthew Lowe at nine, Cole Mortensen just under nine, Cooper Stevenson at seven. It's going back to the other game. In their last game with them, the only players who scored were the starting five from both teams. Really? We'll get for the flag in the starting lineup. For America, this evening we have four of our outstanding young people from Box Elder High School to sing the national anthem for us. We have McCall Walker, Emma Ferry, Tanner Nichols, and Ike Huff.
Thank you very much. Before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to remind you that we do have a full service concession stand out in the lobby for all your snacking and drink needs. All proceeds go to support high school athletics. We also, ladies and gentlemen, if you have family members who can't be here this evening, the game is being live streamed. If you look at the banner here on the west side, you can see and text the websites to those who can't be here. And now to uh, introduce the starting lineups for each team. First, the visiting Bonneville Lakers. Number five, Coy Dixon. Number 11, Bo Dixon. Number 21, Carson Jones. Number three, Joseph Tesh. And number four, Jacob Williams. And now the starters for your box elder beans. Number three, Elijah Kinsey. Number four, Cole Wharton. Number 11, Matthew Rowe. Number 23, Cooper Stevenson. And number 31, Jackson McKee. All right, we got a ball game uh, about ready to get going here, and uh, I am looking forward to this game. I am too, and um, for those who weren't listening last night, on my score sheet, I've run out of space in past games. I put another call him in for overtime, so. Uh, and we got that last night, didn't we? We absolutely did. <laughs> you, you, that was not in vain. <laughs> so, you know what? It wouldn't shock me if it, if it was that close. I mean, it, it wouldn't me either. Uh, you know, Box Elder, last week they came in, they had quadruple overtime against Woods Cross. Uh, two weeks before that, they had a double overtime against Northridge. It's been a great uh, time here. Uh, Carson Jones jumping against McKee and uh, controlled by the Lakers. Back door to Jones and an easy bucket. Jones only has five three-pointers on the on the season. I'm a little surprised McKee went that far out to guard him. Cooper Stevenson for three off the rim. Well, I just bumped him a couple times. He's got to be careful. Great uh, move and score on that one by Jake Williams. Kersey had a body on him the whole time. Yeah, he did. In a lot of games, we've seen that called a foul. Stevenson with the attack. Six-footer, no good. Stevenson's missed a couple that he normally gets. Kersey and steals. Kersey with the steal. That steal brought to you by Heritage West title. And uh, we want to see their name here a lot tonight. And short rebound by Box Elder. I surprised Matt didn't take that three. Kersey for three, no good. That's not Elijah's game. He likes to penetrate. Yeah, rebound goes to Dixon and the Lakers. Playing very well so far. Another back door. That looked like a travel. And that Coach was McKee Carson, agrees with me. Carson Jones with the two points there. Bonneville up six. Box Elder doesn't want to get down too far. They're, they appear to be very methodical and don't make a lot of mistakes. power move inside he, he got bumped a little bit but they didn't call it on the other end so they you know they swallowed their whistle there which I uh, like as long as they call it the same both ways they, they did 
I think it, you could have called a foul on Percy on a few uh, the other time, and and there's they another didn't. box elder uh, takeaway brought to you by Heritage West title. There, the excellent seal there by McKee. Almost got the entry level pass. Yeah, that the pass was too high coming in. Yeah, that needs to be a lower pass coming into him. You know, although with a big, you hate to get too low. McKee got bumped coming through. They're letting him play. They, there's no no fouls on either team three minutes into this thing. I, I was starting to make some notes here. Was that a turnover for Box Elder? It was. He's in that key for quite a while. He's still in there. He picked up his dribble and he couldn't get out. Nice take, rebound. Another con Martin's lot of contact. Kersey, good chance. Inside to McKee for two. Well, it's very apparent that they're listening to Jace because they've tried to go inside to Jackson quite a bit. You know, and it worked there quite well. And he lost it. I'm not sure. They're saying it got knocked out. We had a bad angle, but from our angle, it did look like he just lost it. But his body was in front of the ball. Yep. Laker ball under their own basket. And two points there by Joseph Tesh. Bonneville back up by four. Stevenson inside. The floater is good for two. Stevenson's been more aggressive the last few games. I think I like it. <clears throat> well, I think one thing that's helped him is he's had games where he was really on from the three-point line, and, and that creates the dribble drive. People have to come out and guard you a little closer out there. Wide open that time is Tesh. No good. Rebound goes to Stevenson. Stevenson's pushing. Low drives baseline. Reverse lamp gets blocked. And I, they call a foul on Tesh. I, I didn't, didn't see, see that. that one. They called the foul on him. But uh, Lowe's going to go to the line shooting, too. They need to take advantage of the free throw line. They've not always been great at it. Foul is called on Joseph Tesh. His first. Yeah, there, there's been a lot more contact in this game by both teams than that one there. He crumble. makes the first one. And he's sitting at the crumble cookie free throw line as well. Got Gabe Sever coming in for Elijah Kersey for Box Elder. Lowe can tie this thing up. which he does. So after being down 6-0, it's now 8-8. Nice pull-up jumper there by Bo Dixon. Bo Dixon for two. The, the game is 8-10, and both teams have four different players that have scored. Stevenson in. Inside again to McKee. In and out. <laughs> that was all the way in and out. Miwa Brown had that rebound. Bonneville may, oh, now there's a switch. They had Cole Mortensen on, on Jones. I said they may want to take advantage of that size mismatch. He's a strong boy. And Stevenson with a hand on that one. Brown gets the two points. Brown for two. So 
Bonneville has 12 points. Five different players have scored. <laughs> they're spreading it around. You know, that's one thing Coach McKee says. Their, their scoring is very even. Well, it, you know, it's hard to stop a team like that because you can't just focus on one or two players. Stevenson for three. He's got it. Three pointers brought to you by Brigham Community Pharmacy, located on Medical Drive. And they are open under construction while well, they're under construction. So, first three pointer of the game, either way. McKee the rebound. Box Elder can take the first lead of the game for them. Less than a minute to go in the first quarter. It's been a very well played first quarter by both teams. Absolutely, you know, and, you know, a 10 to 11 score at this point. You know, it's playing uh, right where uh, I think Bonneville wants it. Way downtown, Matt Lowe. That is a good sign to get Matt off. And, and, you know, he's had games where he's really hot. He's had games where he wasn't so hot. That was his first shot of the game. Well, he had the one where he, he got blocked on the layup opportunity and he got fouled. He went to the free throw line. Yeah, okay. But, but it, it doesn't go down as a shot attempt when you get fouled. Got 10 seconds left. Box Elder by two. Dixon for three, no good, and that's the end of the first quarter. Box Elder 14, Bonneville 12. Very well played. Can't, can't argue with that game. We, we, uh, we'll, we'll take that one. We'll be right back. Kent's Market is your hometown grocery store meeting your everyday needs. Whether it's fresh produce, quality meats, or a made-from-scratch bakery, their excellent customer service will meet your needs, even at their pharmacy. Kent's has stores located in Brigham City, Tremont, Roy, and Clearfield. Check us out on Facebook or on our website, www.kentsgrocery.com. Oh, and don't forget, every Friday, it's Fritter Friday. All Fritters are two for one dollar. Kent's Market, mostly owned and operated. No matter what generation you're from, when you hear Hanson Motor Company, we hope you'd consider buying a car from us. I'm Matt Hanson. My grandpa KV started Hanson Motor Company with a customer first philosophy. I know that he'd be proud as we have hundreds of five star reviews as we continue to put our customers first. Earning Hanson Motors another Dealer of the Year award in customer satisfaction. Come in and experience the family difference at Hanson Motors. All right, we're back for quarter number two and uh, Kind of what we expected, a great game, I, tight. I think it's been better played than what I expected. <clears throat> Not a lot of turnovers, a couple, but I mean, one foul on Bonneville, none on Box Elder. The refs are letting him play. They're calling it even. There, there's been some contact all over out there, both ways, so. Both teams spreading the ball and scoring around. McKee floats it in, no good. A little bit of a force on that shot. Good defense there by Elijah to stop the, the penetration. <clears throat> McKee was coming over to help as well. Tesh from the free throw line gets two to tie it up. Joseph Tesh for two. Kersey with the drive. He count the bucket and he's fouled. He's going to go to the crumble cookie free throw line. That's his game. He's made some threes, but as a box elder homer, I want him driving to the basket. He is so strong. Matt Lowe in for the bees. Lowe and coming in for Mortensen. couple of things that I, I like the fact that Box Elder's spreading it around. I like that they're getting McKee touches down underneath, even though he only has two points. He's touching the ball. Box Elder now up by three. Looked like that, a little bit of contact that, that there. One, I think should have been called. 
Yeah, the one foul they called. Well, they've had two now, but <laughs> the first one I, I didn't think was a foul. And now they're going to call another one that I didn't think was. So I, I'm confused. They're going to call that one on. That's uh, on McKee. McKee. I thought he had great position. I on did that. too. That that may have been a makeup call. I don't know. <laughs> We've got Christian Watkins coming in for McKee. Be interesting to see if Bonneville goes down to Jones down low. There they go. Inside Jones, turn around, two points. They were thinking the same thing I was, and we got a timeout. Uh, Jones for two. Timeout Bonneville. Bonneville. With that timeout, we'll be right back. We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. We do aftercare, and that's where Melanie Christie will go in and meet with the family after the services have been completed, and she'll help them with Social Security, help them file for life insurance, help them with federal government employee work. We go through credit cards. We, we help the family with all that transition that's coming out. All right, welcome back. 6-10 left to go here in the first half, and Box Elder with a uh, one-point margin. So with McKees on the bench, I I think I'm looking for Kersey and Mortensen to penetrate and low to... Just paying attention here, I, I believe, I'm not 100% positive, but last night at the girls game, uh, Courtney Porter uh, came down awkward on her leg and uh, not sure the extent of the injury, but it looks like that is her that just came in the, the door on crutches with her leg in a in some kind of a brace or a splint or something, but uh, good to see her out and uh, hope for her speedy recovery and hopefully she can get back out on the court soon. Another turnover on Box Elder, now a foul on Mortensen. Tash will be going to the line shooting two. Now it's two team fouls each and we got uh, McKee and, and Stevenson set to come back in for Box Elder. And Tesh makes the first one. It's all tied up again. So Box Elder now has their starters back in. With just under six to go in the second half. I don't see either team. You'd mentioned that, that Bonneville goes seven deep. So does Box Elder. Yep. You know, very, you know, very similar these two teams in my opinion. From, and from what I've seen. I think looking at the records, maybe Bonneville's a little more consistent. Yes. Matt Lowe drives in, misses from 12 feet. Brown on the far side gets blocked by Lowe. That should have been a foul, but they're just going to call it out of bounds on Box Elder's ball. So Bonneville's coach is complaining he got fouled on the shot. I don't think he did. I, no, McKee's complaining that, that we got fouled on. <laughs> No, it looked like a good block by Lowe. Once again, if both coaches are upset, you're probably doing it right. <laughs> a foul on Brown pushing McKee. He, and what he was doing was he, he was getting leverage with his knee right up against McKee's backside and, and just pushing him out. He, he made it too easy for the referee to call that. And now it's two on him. He will take a seat. Once again, great seal by McKee. Yep, he got the ball inside, all alone, wide open, as uh, Jones went for the steal and didn't get it. And a block by Mortensen. 
Oxeta's got a handful of blocks tonight. And it's not McKee blocking. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the short guy. It, it, it's Mortensen. It's low. It's, it's uh, Kersey. <laughs> They're all very good athletes. Three ball in and out. Rebound Mortensen. Dixon said, I want one for that. Low for three. He's got it. That's his second of the night. Box out or no up by four. And uh, Brigham Community Pharmacy gets their name on the screen again. Mortensen almost with another block. He McKee. does get one. Well, he get <laughs> and that time McKee, or they got, McKee got the block. They're going to call a foul on low. low. A lot of these blocks are coming from the blind side, too. So the players aren't aware they're coming. Tesh gets the first. Nathan Burnett in for Bonneville. Wiping some moisture up off the court. Stevenson uh, pulling double duty, pull, pulling, pulling double janitorial duty. duties yep. tonight. Yep. And Tesh makes them both. He's four of four from the line tonight. the power move inside again. He will post up people that are significantly uh, taller than he, but he's stronger than everybody. <clears throat> he's got great moves down low. A little long rebound. Stevenson almost oh. came up with it. He's got to be a little bit careful down there pushing. Jones inside misses, Kersey the rebound. Oh, and a steal, steal and a foul on Stevenson. Stevenson not absolutely get, needs to be called for that one. Uh, he came up thinking, what, what's up with that? But he, he clearly fouled him. <laughs> 14 fouls now on Box Elder, three on Bonneville, and we're more than halfway done with the second quarter. Watkins coming in for Stevenson. Jones ends up with the rebound. That was a pinball down in there for a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> got three minutes left. Box Elder still keeping a four point lead. Elbow shot, good for Burnett. He doesn't score a lot, but that looked good. Mortensen in, he'll be fouled. That didn't look like much either. No, I didn't see it. It might have been down low or something, but they're saying it was across the arm. And Tesh with that one, that's his second. We've got Coy Dixon ready to come back in for Bonneville after the first free throw. Cole makes that, that's his first point of the game. Although he's been very active, very involved. Nixon, that went and a little bit long. Box Elder by three with two and a half left to go in the first half.
Bucks are playing good defense, standing in front of their men. They close out quickly. They, Cole might have got away with a little grabbing of the, the wrist. Oh, oh. Low. Lowe got his ankles broke on that one. Yeah, he, he faked him out good. That's Bo Dixon for two. It's now a one-point game. The key's wanting the ball down low. And Lowe gets fouled on driving. Yeah, it was on the pass, so that's going to be ball out for Box Elder. Fouls on Nathan Burnett, his first. So Burnett gets the foul. Foul's really not an issue. No, not right now. Although you got a couple of people with two. If they get another one, then it does become. The total fouls is very low, but. Inside, nice back door. for two from Stevenson. <laughs> nice, nice play there by those two. Nice communication. And McKee, McKee gets with the steal. the steal. And gets stripped out by Jones. Yeah, he got him before he could get up for the shot, but it, it was know, a clean one. That wasn't going to be a shot. That was going to be a dunk. Yeah, it was, it was clean. <laughs> it was, I don't was, know. On that one, if it's contested, just lay it up and make sure you make it. <clears throat> Less than a minute to go now. Box Elder up by three. And that will be a foul on uh, Ted, or excuse me, uh, Williams. Kersey going to the line for two. Crumble cookie free throw line. His first. Elijah Kersey shoots two. Makes the first. There's 50 seconds left. It'll be interesting to see what Bonneville does if they go for one shot or if they attack. In the previous games, it looks like they were just going for one shot with about this much left. That was short. That's Bucks that are second missed free throw. Bonneville hasn't missed one yet. Zone defense here for Box Elder inside and two points for Williams. Box Elder got a little bit, a little bit lazy on that. So now Box Elder has 25 seconds to take the last shot. Kersey wants the ball down low. He gets it against their biggest player, and he gets the score. And there was some pushes going around both directions and underneath there. Well, I, I'm sorry, but Jones went to the floor. Kersey's not going to knock him over. He's a big boy. Yes. That, that was a total flop. So Box Elder's got the lead at halftime, 30 to 26. Okay. I'm going to head down to the court. We're going to give away our scholarship here in just a minute. Uh, we've got a uh, dance uh, team going on right now. And then uh, Johnny's going to have his chance to run the computer up here so yeah we'll see how that goes so hopefully when it's all said and done i can get to the ads and we'll, we'll pay attention to the, the rockets for right now
said that uh, applied, but only one has won, and uh, I didn't choose who won. Uh, each one of our sponsors got to put in a vote. We took the names off from the application, so they were confidential, so they weren't voting for anybody. The content is what was voted on. But, uh, you know, we'd like to introduce some of our, our sponsors, and, and uh, our sponsors for this year are Sin Staffing, Brigham City Outdoors. Uh, let's see, I think everyone's, I'm not sure everyone is here or not. Uh, from Brigham Community Pharmacy, we have Brock Crystal. Come on out, Brock. Uh, Brigham Heating and Cooling. Okay, Greg Balls, he's here. Uh, representing Brigham Heating and Cooling. Burt's Auto Body and Glass. Bryce's Body Shop. Uh, cover Up. Didn't see Brian here. Uh, Crumble Cookies. Uh, D. L. Evans Bank. Ken was going to be here. I'm not seeing him. Okay. Exit Realty Advantage. Frank May Ski New. George's Point S Tire. Uh, Gillis Funeral Chapel. Brent couldn't be here, but he said to appoint our very own uh, Johnny Hepworth to be in his place. Uh, Hanson Motor Company. We got Cam Hanson here. Uh, from Heritage West Title. I haven't seen Brandy here yet. Um, Kings Market in Brigham City. Papa Murphy's Pizza. Uh, from uh, Brigham City's SEM Jewelers, Jewelers, we have uh, Tori Berry. And then from, I'm sorry, Tori Naismith. That was the name that was sent to me, I'm sorry. <laughs> and from Dan Price State Farm Insurance, we have uh, Yessie Torres. Yeah! And from Utah State University, Brigham City Campus, we have Tim Olson. We appreciate all of our sponsors. <laughs> all right, so this is the time everybody's been waiting for. Uh, our $1,000 scholarship goes out to Kale Bodley. Kale, are you here? Right there. All right. Come in here, shake your hands. Here. Congratulations, Kale. Appreciate it. And uh, we got to get a picture with you. Uh, I think I got a camera on the point up the stairs. Yeah. Okay. We, got, we got somebody to take a picture right here for us. Jump, get everybody in here. I know. They're, they're all getting you, so jump, jump on in here. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Kale. All right, so we just gave away the $1,000 scholarship to Scam Cam Bodily. It sounded like I couldn't understand real well, but we thank all of our sponsors, and we're going to recognize them right now. The following was performed by everyday writers like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that thing. <laughs>
Kent's Market is your hometown grocery store meeting your everyday needs. Whether it's fresh produce, quality meats, or a made-from-scratch bakery, their excellent customer service will meet your needs, even at their pharmacy. Kent's has stores located in Brigham City, Tremont, Roy, and Clearfield. Check us out on Facebook or on our website, www.kentsgrocery.com. Oh, and don't forget, every Friday, it's Fritter Friday. All fritters are two for one dollar. Kent's Market, mostly all in their is pretty expensive, and concurrent enrollment classes are like five bucks a credit. It's such a good deal. Financially, it's just, it makes sense. It motivates me a lot more to learn more in the class. It's been really cool to be able to not only learn new things, but also receive high school and college credit. It's not just another class that you take in high school. It's actually something that's going to help me in my future. I think that USU is really out to help students get where they want to be in life. That's what's important about it. Kale. All right, there's a picture there of Kale and his parents over on there. Uh, the recipient of our $1,000 scholarship. So, congratulations to Kale. And I feel a lot better not being on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're starting the second half with Box Utter, a four point lead. We'll get into some point totals as we go along. Uh, very well played first half. Nice take inside by Dixon. It's going to be out on. I was going to think McKee I, hit that out. That's what I was thinking too. But I thought we were fortunate to not get a foul called on low. But we've seen a lot of times where the referees will call it one way in the in the first half or quarter, and then switch. switch. That didn't happen. Elbow shot, McKee for two. Spock Elder's largest lead of the game, I believe, at six. Third quarter has been kind of a bugaboo for Box Elder this year in some games. They need to stay playing just as well as they have. That start by McKee was a good uh, indication also. Joseph Tesh for two. And Tesh now has 10 points in the game with that bucket. Low got bumped and they, they didn't call that. Yeah. Looked like a foul. They, they, they got his arm. Tesh. He got tangled up and couldn't get out. And uh, that is three on Tesh. So that's. Yeah, that because Brown is uh, a fine ball player, but he's not Tesh. Tesh is their leading scorer of the night. I wouldn't think you'll sit on the bench too long. I wouldn't think so. Might depend on how the game's going. If Bottomville can get a couple of baskets and get it closer, they'll leave him out. Stevenson for three, in and out. Brown, the rebound going the other way. Dixon long, in and out. Mortensen with the rebound. In and out for Kersey. And it's going to be a He'll foul be on Stevenson. Yep. Williams going to the line for two. Where Bonneville has missed, they're 4-4, four four, but they've all been by Tesh. Tesh. <laughs> so I don't know if that's an indication that the rest of the team will shoot as well. We will find out. He makes it. Williams got it, so. Buck Silder's five to seven from the line, which is really pretty good. And Williams makes them both. However, not as good as six of six. Buck Silder's lead now at two. Which gives Bonneville the luxury of keeping Tesh on the bench for a little bit longer. Stevenson, the fadeaway, goes in. Stevenson, put 
Down low to Williams. Ooh. And he gets it. A little fadeaway there. And Jason Williams for two. Back to a two-point game. Is. Elbow shot, McKee again, no good this time. I think Jackson needs to get back down to posting up. Downtown, no good. Tipped out by Lowe, but Bonneville got it. Williams misses again. Stevenson misses. And Blocked nice there by Kersey. Kersey well, I don't know block. if it was a, was that a block or a, a steal. Mortensen misses the, the floater. McKee wants a foul, but. Yeah, the it, way they've been calling the game, that, that's consistent. Doesn't make it that it wasn't a foul, but it's been consistent with how they've called it. Inside to Brown, nice pass uh, by Jones. Brown has four and we're all tied up. Stevenson loses the handle. Foul on Mortensen if, I don't know, is that second on him? It might have actually been a good, good foul. To avoid a layup. Three, they're saying on Three him. on him. That, then I'd almost rather give up the layup. So, full timeout. We'll be right back. Timeout, Box Elder. Oh. The following was performed by everyday riders like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I was just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that yeah. thing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ryan. We offer embroidery and screen printing to help you promote your business. We can also help you with your church or school groups, family reunions, or any other occasion that might require a t-shirt. So come in and see us at 47 South Main in Brigham City or 115 West Main in Tremont. <laughs> well, in this third quarter, Bonneville's outscored Box Elder 8-4 to, to tie it up, and they've got the ball. They've... Clearly got the momentum. We're halfway through, and Box Elder only has four points. Yeah, it's starting to last a little bit. has not been real good for him here in the third quarter. Mortensen with a good rebound. Kersey for three. Count it. Brought to you by Brigham Community Pharmacy. Well, that's a good way to get us back on track. Sever set to come back in for Box Elder at the next break. Good help by Stevenson. They're going to call a foul on it. Oh, he stepped on the line. On the line. <coughs> break for Box Elder. He, he did get bumped a little bit, but once again, that's how they've called it the whole night. So Box Elder by three, a chance to go up more. With Brown on McKee, he, they really need to get him down low. And a lost ball there into the hands of the Lakers. And Box Elder gets it back. Some and there's going to be a foul there. on Williams. I think he got an errant arm to his mouth. <clears throat> that's his third. No, that's his second. Fouls on Jacob Williams, his second. They had Mortensen's fouls still up on the board. I, I'd like to see his box elder go right into McKee here down low with Brown on him. I don't think he can guard him quite as well.
That was... And that's where you wanted him to swallow the whistle because Jackson had, had a clean pass to the basket. You know, they've been letting that go all night. Yeah. You know, so that one's kind of kind of ticky-tack based on uh, what I've seen. That's three on Brown, though. Long two for low is no good. He, he's got to step back three feet. <laughs> Only needed a foot and a half on that one. <clears throat> Kersey the rebound. That Bonneville one. does not have a three-point shot yet tonight, or at least a make. Had a couple turnovers right here. You know, for Box Elder to be up three with the, like, three turnovers they've had here. It's going to be a foul on Stevenson. Williams going to the line for two, where he's two for two for the night. Stevenson's second foul. Both teams each have three team fouls in this second half. And Williams misses that one. So they can miss. Mortensen going in for low. And he misses again. Kersey misses on the layup. <clears throat> Great move. And then uh, Jones makes it, and timeout for Box Elder, I believe. Back to a one-point game. This is quite the ball game. A Bonneville at the timeout. All right, we'll be right back. Kent's Market is your hometown grocery store meeting your everyday needs. Whether it's fresh produce, quality meats, or a made from scratch bakery. Their excellent customer service will meet your needs, even at their pharmacy. Kent's has stores located in Brigham City, Tremont, Roy, and Clearfield. Check us out on Facebook or on our website, www.kentsgrocery.com. Oh, and don't forget, every Friday it's Burger Friday. All flavors are two for one dollar. Kent's Market, mostly owned and operated. So box out with the ball and one point lead and 148 left to go here in the third. Knocked out by Brown. That was <coughs> close to going off from McKee. Yeah. I like that they're they're wanting to go down to him though. Got just under a minute and a half left to go in this quarter. Percy gets that layup to go. It was an acrobatic layup. <clears throat> Box out are now up by three again. Mortensen with his hands in there. And it went, oh, that Ooh. went off Jones, but the referee missed it. I, I think Mortensen hit it and it stayed with, in Jones's hands when Jones was out of bounds, so. Low coming in for Mortensen. McKee's done a good job of getting pe people in and out and getting a little bit of rest here and there. Jones misses McKee the rebound. Less than a minute to go in this quarter. <clears throat> And there will be a foul on Jones. He didn't like it, but you, that call is going to be made. Yeah, when, when you come in every from time. that angle yeah. like that, it, it, you're going to get it. 
it's hard not to get a piece of the body when you're reaching all the way across. That's his first foul, fourth team foul. 43 seconds left to go. Referee's telling Williams he has to give Mortensen a little bit of room to get that pass in. Kersey wants three more. He's got three more. Brought to you by Brigham Community Pharmacy. So we have 20 seconds left. Looks like Bonneville's going to go for one shot. Box Elder by six. Yeah, it, you know, it's just his last few possessions. Box Elder kind of got back on track. Three ball, Dixon is good. That's Bo Dixon. That's the Bonneville's first three-pointer of the night. Cole gets it off. And we come to the end of the quarter, Bruce. Box Elder, this is this is staying a, a nice tight game. With Box Elder up three. We'll be right back. We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. We do aftercare, and that's where Melanie Christie will go in and meet with the family after the services have been completed, and she'll help them with Social Security, help them file for life insurance, help them with federal government employee work. We go through credit cards. We, we help the family with all that transition that's coming out. No matter what generation you're from, when you hear Hanson Motor Company, we hope you consider buying a car from us. I'm Matt Hanson. My grandpa KV started Hanson Motor Company with a customer first philosophy. I know that he'd be proud as we have hundreds of five star reviews as we continue to put our customers first. Earning Hanson Motors another Dealer of the Year award in customer satisfaction. Come in and experience the family difference at Hanson Motors. All right, we are back now with uh, one quarter to go, and uh, who knows how many overtimes tonight? Yeah, who knows? It, it, it's a tight game. I mean, it 42, is. 40, 39, and uh, the one thing that uh, Coach Bollinger told me, he said the first one, 45 wins, was his prediction. Box Elder's three points away from that. All right, that's a Matt Lowe three. I'll take Matt Lowe, Elijah Kersey, uh, Mortensen, or... McKee, any of them out there can make yeah, that. Yeah, you know, Elijah's made a couple. I still like him going to the basket. I, I would agree. And he makes Percy that one. for three again. <laughs> Brought to you by Brigham Community Pharmacy. And uh, that, Box Elder, first one to 45. So we'll see if uh, Coach Bollinger's uh, correct. They're going to call a foul on probably Kersey. McKee was coming over, and he's slow to get up. That'll be uh, Bo Dixon going line shooting too. They called it on McKee, McKee I think. Huh? It's only his second. Fourth team foul on Box Elder. He misses the first. Those are killers. That's uh, the third missed free throw in a, low for, in a row for Bonneville. When you're down six, those three matter. So Bo Dixon makes the second one. Box Elder's got to stay aggressive. Don't get, don't get lazy. Don't get complacent. Comfortable. Inside to McKee. Left hand oh, off the back of the rim. A little long. Nice switch by Mortensen to pick up Dixon. Dixon for three. Bo Dixon. That's his second three of the night. He's heating up. It's a two point game for Box Elder. Oh, that little errant pass, a great idea. Let's 
Let's try Corey Dixon for three. So and now Bonneville has the lead. Couple three-pointers back-to-back make a difference. Yes, they do. Inside to McKee. He gets two. And we got a timeout, Box Elder. That'll be a 30-second timeout. We're going to take just a short one and be right back. Hi, I'm Ryan from Cover. We offer embroidery and screen printing to help you promote your business. We can also help you with your church or school groups, family reunions, or any other occasion that might require a t-shirt. So come in and see us at 47 South Main in Brigham City or 115 West Main in Fremont. All right. Uh, we are back. And uh, Box Elder by one. So this, this game is exactly what we were anticipating. Yeah. Box Elder by one. Bonneville with the ball. Six minutes to go. I mean, we're setting up for a great finish. So when Box Elder has the ball, they've had Jones, who's one their, he's their biggest player. He's been guarding Kersey, which is great when he goes down low because he has the strength, but I don't know that he can stay with Kersey out, up top. Good defense there by McKee. Nice shot by Jones. A little better offense, huh? Bonneville back up by one. It's just back and forth now. Kersey all the way to the basket. He gets a scoop for two. That's 23 points tonight for Kersey. Holy cow, he's had a great night. He has. He's And he's drawn a, a tough assignment defensively as well. Offensive foul on Jones. They're counting the They're basket. Counting the basket, but it's after the basket the foul. Now and they're, they're calling, calling a block on, on McKee. Did he I, just you know, reverse that call? Yeah, he did. I mean, I don't know. For the way this game's gone, that's that's a, that's a travesty. <laughs> that was, uh, I don't know. I'm not. A and he makes it, so that puts Bonneville up two. Jones guarding Kersey again. Stevenson's been a little quieter here in the second half. Jackson's trying to post up. Too much sanding around here by Box Elder. Kersey with three. Three, no good. Jones a rebound. Yeah. I'd... Bonneville has a chance to go up by four or five now. That's Box Elder Box ball, Elder ball yeah. off from Tesh. Mortensen got his hand in there and deflected yeah. it, which. Box Elder dodged the bolt there. They haven't been down by a couple of scores for a while. We need to make sure we get a good shot here. Oh, and, and Mortensen had it. Oh, they're going to call him for a walk. No, they're going to call foul. Tesh. That's number four on Tesh. You know, and I, I, I don't know. I, they haven't called that one all night either. So now Brown's coming in for Tash. So absolutely go inside to Jackson here. Brown's guarding him. I think Jackson can take advantage of that matchup. Stevenson three in the corner, misses. Nobody down to rebound for Box Elder. Four minutes left, Bonneville up by two. Dixon for three again. He has heated up. Bo oh, Dixon, his third three of the night. Bucks that are now down by five. 
they're going to call a foul on Brown, and I. He uses he uses that his knee to push Jackson out, and it just makes it easy. That's the sixth team foul on Bonneville. The next one will be one and one. And that, that's four on Brown as well. So Tashin and Brown they, both with four fouls. They for, they need to go into Jackson. Reverse layup for low for two. That's Matt's first points of the second half. Three point game, three and a half to go. Travel on Williams. On I, I didn't see it, Bruce. I, I, I thought did he was not pivoting. See that either. I, I was considering it a pivot from what I saw. I, I did too. but I, I wasn't watching his feet. Ad, admittedly, I wasn't either. But now Box Elder down three, have a chance to tie it up with a three. And, and they turn turn it over. That's the part that kills. Is those turnovers. Oh, and that's going to be a foul on Stevenson. Good awareness there by Dixon to just kind of scoot over scoot over into the path, and Stevenson was going as fast as he could go to get back. Couldn't, ad couldn't adjust quickly enough. It's free throws the rest of the way out both ways unless it's an offensive foul, so... The, the reason Bonneville's where they are now is the three-point shot. They've gotten hot all of a sudden. They're going to call a foul on, on Elijah. Yeah, I, I think I'm I, pretty sure it was. It was. <laughs> I, I won't argue that call. So one and one for Bo Dixon, where he's one of two. That's only Kersey's first foul. Which is unusual because he plays a very physical game. <laughs> Makes it. He had to flush it, but he made it. Yep. Bonneville up four. Still plenty of time. Don't You can't get too concerned quite yet. That one went right in, they're back up by five. So Box Elder letting the fourth quarter get away from him a little bit here. Stevenson for three in the corner is good. Brought to you by Brigham Community Pharmacy. That's Cooper's second three-pointer of the night. Now down two with 2.43 to go. This is what we like. We like this, we'll be right back. We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. My wife Lori and I have always felt that family is important and when you have a family owned funeral home, you get personal um, attention than you do than the big corporate funeral homes that are in the area. A lot of funeral homes will just say, here's your bag and thank you for letting us do your services, but we like to go one step further ahead. All right, uh, 243, two-point ball game. It, it's up for grabs here tonight. Yeah, Tess has come back in for Bonneville. They're with their starters, with the exception of Coy Dixon is sitting for right now for Bonneville. Box Elder has their starters out there. Box Elder hasn't subbed much at all this second half. Jones short, McKee the rebound. Box Elder with a chance to tie or go ahead. There they go, there's the opportunity Low right there. Four three, and Box Elder takes the lead. Now we, we're just over two minutes to go and Box Elder up one. <laughs> this is a, we, we've had some great games this last couple of weeks. Jones with a great rebound and put back. And Bonneville calls a timeout. So now Bonneville back up by one with 
two minutes to go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. We'll be right back. No matter what generation you're from, when you hear Hanson Motor Company, we hope you consider buying a car from us. I'm Matt Hanson. My grandpa KV started Hanson Motor Company with a customer first philosophy. I know that he'd be proud as we have hundreds of five star reviews as we continue to put our customers first. Earning Hanson Motors another Dealer of the Year award in customer satisfaction. Come in and experience the family difference at Hanson Motors. The following was performed by everyday riders like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I was just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that thing. <laughs> All right, 2.02 left to go, and who knows how many overtimes. Heck. Coy Dixon back in for Bonneville, so both teams have their starters out there. And backside help, and a flop by Jones, and... Kersey gets the two points for the lead. Yeah, I mean, Kersey just turned. He didn't even bump him, and he fell. These referees aren't going to give that. <laughs> and you can you can hear the student section yelling flopper out there as well. well. He's the biggest kid out there. He's not going to get knocked over that easily. Low of the rebound. Box Elder a chance to go up three. That's and a, a foul. foul. Kersey will go to the free throw line. Brought to you by Crumble Cookies. That one puzzles me. It looked like they fouled him on purpose. Maybe they, uh, maybe they think he can't make them. This is where you earn your keep. He's two of three for the night. And it looks like Lowe has a little bit of blood, blood on, his, on jersey. his jersey. So they're going to allow the trainer to chance to get, get it cleaned up. Question is, is it his or somebody else's? I, I don't know. <laughs> How do you know? It's on the the midsection, so I would think it'd be somebody else, or it, I guess it could be on his hand. And he, you no, know, they got it taken care of. So this is one and one. Kersey's got to make them. He hit, he hit the, the wire top. above. It went in, but that wire they need to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, we haven't seen it much this year, but we have in years past. Yep. So now Bonneville down one with the ball and just over a minute to go. Got to play good defense without foul. And Kersey gets the steal and a foul going to be on Dixon. So Kersey goes back to the line shooting one and one. An opportunity to redeem himself. Well, that one, I think it would have went in anyway. Yeah, barely hit that wire, that support wire. Well, the blood's spreading, so <laughs> somebody's got blood somewhere. Get, get the trainer some. Yeah, Mike's earning his money tonight. First it's on low, now it's on Kersey. So Kersey at the crumble cookie free throw line. He's long Misses. on that one. So now we have a minute to go, and that's going to be a foul on, oh, timeout before. I, I thought he had a pretty good possession on that anyway, so. Timeout Bonneville. It's a full timeout. Full timeout. We'll be right back. Just a reminder the Box Elder fans are next. 
We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. My wife Lori and I have always felt that family is important and when you have a family owned funeral home, you get personal um, attention than you do than the big corporate funeral homes that are in the area. A lot of funeral homes will just say, here's your bag and thank you for letting us do your services, but we like to go one step further ahead. College is pretty expensive and concurrent enrollment classes are like five bucks a credit. It's such a good deal. Financially, it's just, it makes sense. It motivates me a lot more to learn more in the class. It's been really cool to be able to not only learn new things, but also receive high school and college credit. It's not just another class that you take in high school. It's actually something that's going to help me in my future. I think that USU is really out to help students get where they want to be in life. That's what's important. <clears throat> All right, welcome back with a minute two left to go here in the ball game. Yeah, I don't think Bonneville's going to waste a lot of time on this. They, they've shown that even with uh, 30 seconds left, they'll go right to the basket. And being down one, they got to give themselves time that if they miss to be able to foul again. And Jones with his two points. That gives Bonneville the lead with 45 seconds to go. Same thing for Box Elder. They can't waste a lot of time. they got to attack. Thirty seconds left. Percy misses. Tesh the rebound. Travel. That's a travel. That was a travel. And timeout called by Bonneville, but they missed a travel. Oh, they missed a travel. Yeah, that was a a clear travel in my opinion. 19.5 left to go. And with that, we'll be right back. Kent's Market is your hometown grocery store meeting your everyday needs. Whether it's fresh produce, quality meats, or a made-from-scratch bakery, their excellent customer service will meet your needs, even at their pharmacy. Kent's has stores located in Brigham City, Tremont, Roy, and Clearfield. Check us out on Facebook or on our website, www.kentsgrocery.com. Oh, and don't forget, every Friday, it's Fritter Friday. All Fritters are two for one dollar. We offer embroidery and screen printing to help you promote your business. We can also help you with your church or school groups, family reunions, or any other occasion that might require a t-shirt. So come in and see us at 47 South Main in Brigham City or 115 West Main in Tremont. All right. Uh, break for the Lakers there. Lakers with the ball. Box Elder is going to have to... Foul here, I believe. Yeah, 19 and a half seconds left. So Tesh is four for four from the line. Jake Williams is two for four. Bo Dixon, three of four. And Carson Jones, one of one. So, and, and you've got Williams taking the ball in out of bounds. He's the one that you'd want to foul, I would think, if, if you get the chance. You may, I think you go for the steal first and see what happens. Inbound goes to Tesh. And they got a foul him quick. Yeah, they got 15 seconds left. That's a foul on Morton, so he's riding him like a horse. 11.7. That's all right. So if he makes both, Box Elder has every player out there can shoot the three. Yep. Stevenson's got a couple this game. Kersey's got a couple this game. Lowe's got either one or two. McKee hasn't shot one yet this game. No, but he can make them. So Dixon's at the line. He's 3 or 4 for the night, shooting the 1-1. One one. Student section makes his noise, and he makes the first. It'd be interesting to see if Bonneville can test the inbounds pass to see if they can't get a deflection or something. And, and makes, makes both. both. Box Elder calls a timeout with 7.9 to go. All right, we'll keep this one here. What's Box Elder going to do? 
Well, I, I think you look for Matt Lowe first. If he's not open, Stevenson shot well, Kersey shot well, but I, I think in this situation, I, I would look to Matthew Lowe. So what do the Lakers do? They, well... Do they come out and they foul? Well, they could, but we've seen where that didn't work when... <laughs> I, I forget the Northridge. the Northridge game, and that didn't work. Bucks Oder scored with a second left on the on a missed free throw on a rebound. and well, Actually, it was less than... Than a, well, no, there was exactly one second and they got a tip. But, as you know, most teams don't foul, but uh, that's certainly an option. I mean, th this game has been back and forth, nip and tuck the whole game. And it's been a wonderful game. So what you don't do if you're Bonneville, you don't guard anybody inside the three-point line. It, it doesn't make any sense. No. Because I don't, even if you get a layup, you know, it brings you within one, but you'd have be down to four or five seconds left, and you'd have to foul them, and they'd go back to the line. So Bonneville should not guard anybody inside the three-point line because every one of those five players can, can shoot the three. But I like Matt Lowe if, he, if he's in a catch-and-shoot situation. I like it. Look for McKee to come and put a screen for Lowe. But you can't. You don't want to wait for the last second shot. That's a foul on uh, Tesh. He's, yeah, he's done. He's done. So Mortenson's Mortenson's going to shoot one and one. We've been in this situation before. Down three. Mortenson on the line. Yeah. Um, that you know he wasn't in a position to shoot. I don't even think he was looking to shoot. I, I would not have fouled that early. But now Cole, Cole, wants, Cole needs to make both. So Mortensen had the crumble cookie free throw line. It, it looks to me like they called the foul on Jones. What? That's it. So they had brought Tesh out. Because they th even Bonneville thought the foul was on him. I'm, I'm really confused. I thought that there was no question that was on Tesh. It, it was. Now they're leaving him out, so maybe the scoreboard is wrong. I, yeah, I don't know. Misses. Foul. And they foul. That was a very smart foul. Of course, you have no, no choice, but Brown is their least experienced player out there. Bucks are down two, 5.7 to go. Now they're putting Tesh back in, so he did not foul out. Yeah, that, that's puzzling. That's a couple of breaks, I think, right there that uh, Lakers have gotten. The traveling call and then... Uh, oh, the traveling, the missed call, well, that was huge. And a miss. Timeout called. 4.6 to go. Down two. So here's the situation. 4.6 is plenty of time. See, now that's where I think Bonneville fouling. It, you hurt them. It hurt them there. They fouled too soon at a, at a point where Mortensen wasn't looking to shoot. So they fouled at the wrong time. He made one of two, but with Bonneville missing that front end of a one and one changes. So now, Bonneville can't foul because it's going to be the double bonus. Bucks Oder's down two. It opens up the whole court now. You can go down low to McKee, hopefully get a bucket. You can have Kersey go down low. You got four seconds. It's a lot of time. You know, we've mentioned before, you plan on about a dribble per second is what you can get. You know, and right now, I, I agree with you. You know, look down low. Uh, they should have it on the side, roughly mid-court. Yeah, a bit foul line extended, I think. So so what I do is I get it to Kersey's hands or Mortensen, let him drive to the basket and dish if they if they collapse to or, him. Or let Kersey just take it all the way. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Have him, well, Kersey's taking it in, so it's going to be Mortensen getting the ball. Just penetrate all the way to the basket, and if they come out on him, you can dish. <clears throat> He 
Does it matter? Overtime. Is that an overtime? It's overtime again for Box Elder. And uh, Box Elder knows what that is like as they've had that for three weeks in a row. They had an overtime game. So Mortensen had, had gone baseline and they had kind of trapped him. He tried to pass it, got deflected. But Kersey was already going to the basket and it fell right in his hands and he laid it up. He got it out of his hands very quickly. So we've got overtime. And he did get that ball off. I was looking at my phone. It's a little bit of a delay. He got it with about 0.2 seconds left. So once again, we've asked you before, if you've got any friends that are interested in box under basketball, give them a call. We got free basketball. We got overtime. And I'm glad I have an, another line here to, to <laughs> tally up the scores. <laughs> We're all tied up at 62. Um, Box Elder was the first to 45. I'd mentioned Box Elder wanted this game in the 60s. They just didn't want uh, Bonneville in the 60s as well. So, anyway, we're back at it. The center jump matters again. You know that when you begin the game, it doesn't matter so much because you got alternating possessions. But in overtime, the center jump matters a ton. Absolutely. Every possession is critical. I think Box Elder had a moment right through there. Uh, I think it was in the third or fourth quarter where they had three or four turnovers right there that kind of gave the momentum to, to Bonneville. But, man, this is a great game. Elijah Kersey has 27 points on the night. Box Elder gets the tip. That's really important. Four minutes goes quickly. Stevenson pulls up from eight feet and scores. Box Elder up two in overtime. Kersey almost had a steal there. And and blocked by Morton, but they call the foul. They've let a lot of that go here tonight. But not that one. That's five on Stevenson, Ara Mortensen. Yeah, imagine several come in. That that kind of hurts Box Elder. Well, this is where you know I I go back to when Tess fouled Mortensen. Yeah. They called it on uh, Jones. I'll have to go back and look at that. Maybe I completely missed it. Yeah, that's possible. And he and misses the first one of the night. Misses. He was four for four, and now he misses. I'm glad they didn't call a foul on him. <laughs> one for two. Brown comes in for Ted. I, you know, if I'm, of course, they, you know, they don't want him out there getting a, a fifth foul on him. But I, once I again, I go, defense. I go to McKee, though. Because Brown's got four fouls. He, well, and, and he's, I don't think he's as strong. Yeah. I, I like McKee down low. I don't like him in, in this particular matchup. I like him down low. Three minutes left. Percy, oh, he, I thought he was going to pull the trigger there. McKee, Mc I thought he was going to. They're being very patient. They're not trying to force anything, but you don't want them to be hesitant either. It's almost like they spread it out and let everybody go one on one and see if somebody can get to the basket. Almost a turnover, it and was it a is. Turn turnover. Two points for Jones. Now they take a one-point lead. 2.20 to go. Percy, 4-3. He's got it. it. Brought to you by Brigham Community Pharmacy. That's 30 points for Kersey. I believe that is a career high for him. He had 27 in, our, I think, our last game out. Came up short just a little bit for Williams. I, I like the ball in Kersey's hands right now. 
I think that's a, a good place for it to be. I, I think Kersey, Stevenson, Lowe, I'm comfortable with all of them. But I, I still, I, I would like to see Jackson get the ball down low. I don't, I don't think they can guard him down there. That they're they're going to be timid because of the foul situation. Well, and, and Brown has shown that when Jackson posts up, he uses that knee to push him out, and they've called it at least twice on him. Yeah. And Jackson's a good free throw shooter. It'll be the double bonus. So I'd like to see him post up Jackson. The thing that that it takes away from Box Elder if you do post him up is the the penetration of the other guards. Right. But uh, but yeah. You know, Box Elder with a two-point lead. So we'll see how that uh, pans out. Box Elder with the ball. They just can't have any more turnovers. Yeah, the, the last time they really, I don't think they were trying to milk the clock, but they kept the possession for about a minute, it seemed. It is really hard when the other team is playing pressure defense to not turn it over for that long a time. Once again, next year, that won't be an option. Absolutely. It'll be a 35 second shot clock. I think you'll see the three point shots go up next year among all teams. Well, you know, I, I, I've heard the Jazz announcers mention that the reason the Jazz shoot quickly on the shot clock is the time that you're most open is right after the possession. It's in Kersey's hands. That's what you wanted. Jackson at the free throw line. I'd like to see him get down further. They're, they're taking time off the clock. If somebody overplays, they should have a back door available. Down to just over a minute left. I think they got Lowe's arms. Over to McKee. He needed to attack the basket right there, I think. They're going to call a foul, I believe, on Bo Dixon, and that'll send Elijah Kersey to the line for two this time. So Kersey at the crumble cookie free throw line. So minute two. They took a lot of time off. Kept They, they <laughs> took care of the ball. And the first one is good. And that's great because he'd, he'd missed his last two, and both of them were front ends of one and one. He was two of five going into that shot. So Kersey puts Box Elder now up three. This can be a two-possession game. And, and now four after that make. That's a good taste of cookie there from Crumble. Yeah, good help out there by Kersey. Er, by uh, McKee. Nice take by Jones. Back to a two-point game. 40 seconds to go. Oh, and, and a Jones steal. With a steal. Dixon and it's with all two tied points. up. Tied up again. 30 seconds to go. I would think Box Elder's going to take a timeout here with about 20 seconds, maybe 15 to go. If Fifteen seconds. Maybe ten seconds. They're going to call a timeout. They go. Stevenson, 4-3. No good. You know what? That's uh, double overtime. Bon Bonneville has a huge complaint here. Their, ref, their coach was trying to call a timeout with about four seconds to go. And now the... No, it, he has a complaint. It's all tied up second yeah, I, overtime. They're not going to reverse this, but they, they can't. But well, but if, I agree. if, he, if another referee saw that he was trying to call a timeout, I think they could. But I don't think they're going to. But, but I looked down there. He was trying to call a timeout. He was screaming. It was pretty loud in the gym. And unless you were looking at him, you may not have been able to see it because you can't just go off of, of what you hear unless you see him because that could be a fan calling that. Yeah. I think but Stevenson took that shot just a too little early. too early. Too early, just and it was a little too far out. 
You know, you want to take that so that if you miss, the worst thing that happens is another overtime. But that that's uh, that's too bad for Bonneville, quite honestly. There, there's been a couple of missed calls both directions. You know yeah, that? there have been, and and so you know, I, I don't think the referees have been have determined the outcome. You know, Box Elder, if they would have called the travel, would have put them in a really good situation. In this situation, Bonneville would have had the ball. I think they're giving them the timeout. Oh no! I mean. Now McKee's really upset. Yeah, that. Well, so I've always said you can't complain to the referees. They're not going to change their call, and now they do. How do they change that? I don't see how they can do that. Uh, you know, like I say, if another referee saw, then maybe they're going to have some really upset fans if they. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so they're putting 2.1. Well, Let's see. They're going to count it down here. Well, they, what the Box Elder, they just did their whole game plan based on a beat going in overtime. They just barely found out that they're putting 2.1 seconds well, but, back on the clock. But so they put another minute on the clock. He could still have them huddled up. I, I think that's why they put the minute on, just so the Box Elder, if they wanted to, they could go back and they could change their game plan. <coughs> but it doesn't look like that's what they're wanting so to do. So it looks like, well, they're, they're setting up for the center jump. So we we were confused. Nope, they're giving him the ball. Yeah, they're still giving it to. They're still counting down. We don't know how much time they're going to have. 2.1. So you cannot foul. You want them to get the ball going the away from court. the basket. Now, McKee's wanting them to take the ball out at the baseline. They've got it, you know, three at the top of the three-point line extended halfway up. And McKee's saying they didn't call a timeout there. Yeah, it was. So 2.1 to go. They're going to go into Dixon. He stepped he out of bounds. Mark Zeller has the ball point seven .7. seconds. Box Elder has a chance for a quick shot. So now Box Elder's calling for some extra time. I, I think .7 is probably appropriate. There was 2.1. Yeah, so, so this is a catch and shoot. They need to, they should have McKee back here and just kind of be an alley-oop type pass into McKee towards the basket. You know, I don't like that because if the ball goes out of bounds, Bonneville gets the ball out back here where you where it's inbounded. You can't take up a five-second count. And it's blocked. Okay. Double overtime. Double overtime. Well, we had seven points for each team in that uh, overtime period. So, tied at 69. The referees have struggled a little bit as of late. Of course, the reason I think they've struggled isn't so much the calls they've missed. It's just that they matter more in the fourth quarter and overtime. Absolutely. So, it's, it's, it's mag every call they make is magnified. If that missed... Uh, you know, timeout happens in the first quarter, it's no big deal. Right. If the missed travel happens in the first quarter, it's no big deal. Um, Buck sort of played that, that last, you know, 2.1 seconds well, though. They kept him on the sideline, had two people on him, because you don't have enough time to really do much with it. But he did catch the ball going yeah. towards the basket. Yeah, if they would have had another half a second on there, that would have made a difference. Yeah. He could have set up a little bit better. Well, he he was trapped though over there. He he didn't, and he's not a real tall um, individual, so he couldn't really see much. So once again, we got a center jump, and this matters. Every possession matters in overtime. There's a box elder controls kind of a the tip again. Missed time to jump, but box elder gets it, and Kersey goes into the basket. McKee, McKee gets it almost. Kersey gets the rebound. And 
Low for three. He Get got it. it. Another three-pointer brought to you by Brigham Community Pharmacy. Matt Lowe to put Box Elder up three and going into the double overtime. Dixon's answer did not. But his cousin got the rebound. Jones for two. Jones has had a good game. He has had a great game here. He's a good ball player. Uh, other than the couple of flops that <laughs> I don't think he needs to do, as strong as he is, no. even with Kersey, just stand your ground, make the make the shot difficult. That would have been a foul in other games. <laughs> Kersey. Once again, Box Elder's content to pass this ball around, and it's it's hard to take care of the ball for that long. But that, that's good that they're not forcing it; they're taking what's what's given. Yeah, coming up on two minutes left, Box Elder's got a one-point lead, so we've gone two minutes in this overtime. Box Elder's got a bucket. Bonneville has a bucket, but Box Elder's was a three. They double-teamed Kersey down there. Looked like they got him on the arm. Yeah, I'd, I'd, go, I'd take it to Kersey right now. Yeah, they got to go to Elijah. He's got uh, Bo Dixon on him. He can post him up. Oh, he hit him right in the face. Finally, they call a foul on him. And he's wondering where the foul is. I... Kersey's going to be shooting two. He made his last two. That, that's four on Bo Dixon. He got him right in the face. Yeah, he did. So Kersey at the crumble cookie free throw line made his last two. That one's long, but no, it bounces he got in. The bounce. Box Elder now up two again. Minute 27 left. McKee's taking everybody off the. E either he McKee. has faith in. Uh, well, you don't want to get a silly foul. Right. And you want to set up your defense. That, that, that was the other thing I was going to say. But he yeah. made them both. So that Box one went Elder right by in. So don't want to foul here. He, he found the crumble cookie that he likes. Jones for two again. Box Elder still up one with 110 left to go. Well, Box Elder showing their guy. I think they're just going to run motion here and try to take some time off. And oh, he and lost Percy it. lost it. He got a little too cute with that ball. Now Bonneville can take the lead with a shot. Foul on Stevenson. So that'll put Dixon to the line shooting two. So Stevenson, that's his fourth. And, and Dixon's five of six from the line. He makes the first, we're all tied it's up. tied up. Now Bonneville with a one-point lead. Box Elder can still run their motion, but they've got to do it with the intent to penetrate and, and get to the basket. I'd like to see him go down to McKee again, although they have Jones on him now. And they there's going to be a foul. And, and I didn't see that foul. I didn't either, but I think it was they're going to call it on Tash. And it is Tash. This is he's done this time. So McKee at the free throw line. 
to shoot two. They're going to bring in Nate Burdett. Well, yeah, yeah, Williams over there saying, no, that was on me. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's trying to. It, it goes from, what foul? Nobody fouled. Oh, wait, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame him. I'd try the same. And it's all tied up again. So now if he misses this, Bonneville is probably going to try for the last shot. If he makes it, they're going to try for the first good shot. And he makes it both. Box Elder up one with 30 seconds left to go. So Each team has had one player foul out. And Jones again. Timeout called by Bonneville. He's taken over this over. He's got six points in this second overtime. He had two in the. He's got ten points in the two overtimes. He's he has yeah, like you said, he's taken over this ball game. We're gonna take a quick timeout. We'll be right back. College is pretty expensive and concurrent enrollment classes are like five bucks a credit. It's such a good deal financially. It's just, it makes sense. It motivates me a lot more to learn more in the class. It's been really cool to be able to not only learn new things, but also receive high school and college credit. It's not just another class that you take in high school. It's actually something that's going to help me in my future. I think that USU is really out to help students get where they want to be in life. That's what's important. All right, we are back. And uh, again, a special thanks to all our sponsors and uh, again to Kale Bodley uh, for getting the Beehive Sports Media $1,000 scholarship. So Box Elder with the ball. They have the baseline to run. So... So the free throw shoot, free throw shooting has been a little better tonight, but uh, they've each taken 17 free throws. Bonneville's made 14, Box Elder 12. That's uh, that's huge in a close game. Yeah, it is. So they got Jones guarding Kersey. They're going to call Box Elder ball. ball. 8.7 left. That almost looks like to me like McKee I, hit I that one. I think McKee might have hit that one out. But, but Box some, Elder takes a timeout. And sometimes, sometimes on that, they will give the ball to Box Elder to avoid calling the foul. Yeah, I agree. So with 8.7, Box Elder down one, you, you don't need to run the whole clock down. In fact, you don't want to. You, want to take, you, you don't take a quick shot just to take a quick shot. But you take the first good shot that you got. Take the first first good shot. Look at McKee underneath. Or, you know, I, I think if we can get uh, Kersey to drive, that's not a bad option either. Kersey to drive and, and, and have Matt Lowe spot up for a kick out. Um, doesn't need to be a three. No, it doesn't. But you want to shoot with enough time that if you miss, you can foul or you can get an offensive rebound and put it back in. Box Elder coming out with McKee, Kersey, Sever, Lowe, and Stevenson. See Mortensen on the sideline, you know, he just, he wishes he was out there no. still. Uh, he's a he, difference maker. He is. You know, excellent free throw shooter and ball handler and... Kersey's good. Hands of Kersey. Kersey goes in, gets a shot up. Oh, and him. he almost got it. It would have won the game. He wanted a foul. Bonneville wins in double overtime, 77 to 76. What a game. What a game. Well, uh, uh, Coach Bollinger was incorrect on his uh, prediction that the first one to 45 would win. Yeah. But uh, 
an, any call anywhere in that last little bit could have changed that entire game. It was. It could have gone either way at any point during this game. It was a great game. Uh, good job to Bonneville, and uh, you know that will probably secure Bonneville with first place in the region. Well, not necessarily. Well, for tonight, but if Woods Cross beats them, it's a tie for first place, and Woods Cross would have beat them twice. But, so Woods Cross would have the region championship. But uh, great effort on both teams here tonight. Uh, just a, a great game to watch. Great to come back and see. Uh, so you got totals. Uh, well, I've got there. the totals for Box Elder. You have Kersey with 34, Mortensen with 4, Matthew Lowe with 16, Stevenson with 12, and Jackson McKee with 10. A great game by, by everybody. Great effort. Um, Let's see, for, for Bonneville, we have Tesh with 11. I'm going to add these up as I go. You have Williams with 8. Coy Dixon with 3. I'm going to have to add up Bo Dixon. He had a bundle in the second half. You have Burdett with 2. I'm going to add up Carson Jones as well later. Uh, Brown with 4. So, so Bo Dixon had 7 at half. He ended up with... 15 in the second half in the overtime, so he had 22. And you had Carson with eight at halftime, and he ended up in the second half in overtime with with 19, so 27 for him. They had a, you know, it was it was the Dixon Jones show for Bonneville. Yep. All right. Well, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you, Johnny. What a great game. Uh, lots of overtimes here for uh, Box Elder this year and we'll be back on Friday night uh, with uh, Bonnev or, uh, Bountiful and uh, Box Elder so yeah it'll be fun it always is but it'll be the senior night for both the boys and the girls and then they got a couple of road games as well I believe alright well thank you everybody good night we will be back again on Friday